And this is the scam that goes on being played again and again and again, decade after decade after decade, um, where the common theme is whichever party is in government introduces the agenda. Why? Because oppositions have to oppose to give the illusion of choice. You have no choice in politics. They're masks on the same face. And also, because they want the agenda introduced, any, any party in government introduces the agenda. Because, go back again, through the groups that control the individual parties, they answer to the next stage, which is a network that controls both parties. Party politics in general uh, has been a cold, calculated scam to allow the few to control the many. Because when people started to rebel against the overt dictatorship of royal bloodlines and stuff like that, although those bloodlines still exist, but lots of them now wear dark suits and run politics and banking and business and all the rest of it. Um, but there was a chance at that point where there was this rebellion against uh, royal dictatorship where we might have a political system where people voted for individuals on the basis of their character, on ba the basis of their genuineness, and on the basis of what they genuinely wanted to do for the benefit of people. Now, this is the cabal's worst bloody nightmare. So what they did uh, was create a party political structure. Isn't it funny, when you th think about it, that there's seven billion people on the planet, there's all these different countries with all this potential for uniqueness in the way that the countries are run and, and, and governed and, and uh, things are made to happen. And yet, everywhere you go, you have political parties. Is that the only way we can think about structuring politics? No, it's not. But it's the only way or the best way to control politics in every country, because it works like this. I talked about the spider's web, the global spider's web, but you can also symbolize this very, very well and accurately as a pyramid, a compartmentalized uh, pyramid, where at the, um, the capstone at the top, you have a tiny few who dictate to the whole pyramid. And lower down in the pyramid, where more and more people are, uh, the further you come down from that capstone, those people, although there are more and more of them, they know less and less and less about what that organization's about, um, what its goals are, what its intentions are. The only people that know how that whole pyramid fits together are the few at the top. And um, these pyramids mean that within them are large numbers of people in ignorance of the real goal and intention of the organization they're involved in, be it a political party or whatever, or a, a, a bank, a university, or whatever, the government. Um, and through compartmentalization of knowledge, you only allow to know as much as you need to know to make your contribution. It means that people are making contributions to these sinister pyramids that wish to enslave humanity without having any idea that they're doing so. Because they don't know how what they're doing in apparent innocence connects with them and them and them and them, all working in apparent innocence. But when you fit it together, it's anything but innocent. Only the few at the top know that. This is how these uh, pyramids uh, operate. And so political parties are pyramids, compartmentalized pyramids. And they're run by very, very few people. That's the idea. That's how you control political parties. So if you say you want to run for, you want to be a member of parliament in Britain. To do that, you have to be chosen by the party to represent them at an election. Because if you, if, you, if you stand as an independent, very rarely someone might slip through. But it's very rare. If you're not a part of a political party with that structure, that uh, funding, that access to publicity and promotion, you've really basically got no chance. This is how they've stitched up politics. So to get into the political party, to, to become a politician, you have to um, pass the interview. To pass the interview, you have to confirm that you will follow party policy. Um, and that party policy is decided by
by the very few at the peak of the party pyramid. So you get through that stage, you stand for parliament. You then tell uh, uh, people what you think they want to hear um, in line with the centrally dictated campaign themes that you're told to, to, to promote and to emphasise. And you get elected and you become a member of parliament, like a member of Congress or any, anywhere else around the world. Now, if you are going to progress through that party into the hierarchy that runs it, and if it gets into, uh, into government to become part of the government, you have to spend your time voting in parliament on the basis of what the party hierarchy, the tiny few, are telling you uh, you must vote for or vote against or, or, or whatever. Because if you don't, then you are not going to progress in that party. And it's staggering that in what we call democracy, although democracy and freedom are supposed to be interchangeable words, like hell they are, but we, we have this situation in what's supposed to be a, a free, free politi political system where we have these whips and the, the party whips are there to um, threaten, cajole, um, and sometimes bribe members of the party that don't want to vote with the party's diktat in, in, a, in a vote to, to do that, to, to go against their, uh, their own convictions and what they feel is right and just go with the party line. And the very fact that whips exist show you that politics is an irrelevance in terms of um, being people openly voting for and against what they believe in. It's what the party structure believes in that they are voting for and against. Very recently um, in, in Britain, we had a, a, a vote while I've been over in Australia on having a referendum over the European Union. And lots of people in the Conservative Party, the governing party, were in their hearts wanting to vote for a referendum. But a lot of them didn't enough for the government to win the vote because of the pressure and, and all the rest of it from the party hierarchy. So thus, the party political system is not, and its very structure from the start has never been about representing the interests of the people. It's about each party representing the interests of the tiny cabal at the top of the party hierarchy, which, let's go back again, then answer ultimately to the same force. This is why when David Cameron came in as Conservative Party uh, Prime Minister of Britain, um, he's gone against all the stuff that he said he would do, a vast amounts of stuff he said he would do when he was uh, campaigning for office. And he's just become a, a Tony Blair Mark II, as he will always going to be, because like Blair, he represents the same cabal and thus the same agenda um, unfolds. So, yeah, what we're seeing is America being systematically destroyed. And people would say then, why would Americans like Obama and the, 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 the Democratic uh, Party and, and uh, the, the Bushes and the Republican Party, why would they systematically destroy America? Because they're not representing America. This is the thing to get over. And it is so important that the Occupy protesters understand this. This is not about representing America. They're representing this cabal that dictates to both parties. And that cabal does not uh, want America to prosper. It wants it to be destroyed for a simple reason. When you are seeking a world government dictatorship, um, to dictate to every country. You cannot have superpowers that have the financial and military might to say no to you. So what's happening systematically, it's been going on for decades and more, is the American economy um, has been targeted. And this is why it's in catastro catastrophic disarray. It's because it's systematically been made to be like that. I mean, here's a quest few questions here. Why would governments that really wanted the best for America allow a situation where enormous numbers 
of American jobs, particularly in manufacturing, but other areas too, are outsourced to places like China using slave labor. I mean, first of all, at both ends of the, um, uh, the, the situation, you, you'd say if you were a, a government worth the name, w with, with a heart, you know, involved at all, we are not going to have, first of all, American jobs taken away in this way because it's harming uh, American people. And we're not going to have them taken away to exploit in sweatshops and, and, and slave labor Chinese people and other people in the Far East. But they do it. And the irony is that having done it, having destroyed so much on purpose of the American industrial manufacturing base, America is now cap in hand to China for money to keep going because it can't pay its way. Why? Why would anyone who cares about America bring that situation about? Because they don't. And then you look at what's happened in the financial situation where the privately owned Federal Reserve, Rothschild controlled privately owned Federal Reserve, through people like uh, Bernanke, have hosed trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars at banks and other financial institutions, not just, my goodness, in America, but around the world. And, and where is it? It's just like disappeared. Abracadabra. And, and, and America's now, now stuck with this fantastic debt and the people are stuck with somehow paying it back, which they never will because the American economy will collapse before then exactly as it's supposed to do. Why would anyone who cares about American people be hosing this money everywhere while, while people are in tent cities? Because that is systematically further destroying the American economy. And that's the game. Another question. When people are in tent cities, when they're in terrible, terrible financial trouble, they're losing their homes in incredible numbers, why would the American government be spending all um, added hidden costs in there too, in excess of a trillion dollars a year on the military to go and bomb civilians in increasing numbers? in other parts of the world. Why would they do that? Answer, the American military is not the American military. It's not serving the interests of America, clearly not, with more than a trillion dollars a year going out. It's the cabal's military, which is controlled through the cabal-controlled American government, no matter which party's in, in power. That's why Bush goes to war uh, abroad, and then in comes Obama, the so-called peace candidate, and he goes to war abroad in exactly the same way, because they're following the same uh, uh, agenda. And what is happening is that the American military, and that in excess of a trillion dollars, is being used to advance an agenda in the Middle East and Africa and other parts of the world that the cabal that controls both parties has been following for so long. I mean, if we do not get to that point where we understand that America is a one-party state, Britain is a one-party state, etc., etc. And in fact, when you take the spider's web global uh, construct that I, I started talking about right at the start of this, we live, in effect, if you get to that level, in a global one-party, one-cabal state. It is absolutely vital that we understand this and realize that uh, politics is not the answer, in its present form will never be the answer to what is going on. We have to do it. We, the people, have to do it because politicians are there to do the very opposite of what's good for people. Thanks for listening.